This is a Lyra one o two F eleven long tube uh, achromatic doublet refractor telescope. It comes in this beautiful wooden box. It has four locks on the side, which when you open, you can actually see the gem inside. This is the long tube refractor. It comes with a beautiful feather touch, massive, robust, 360 degree rotatable, uh, Crayford, um, focuser which has a two inch and one and a half inch adapters the rate of the turn is one to eleven or one to ten so one turn of this ten turns of this smaller finer feather touch it has uh, two tube rings and a Wixen style dovetail tube rings are CNC machined on the lathe is not cast and with this massive uh, knobs to hold it together the main feature of this this uh, dew shield is retractable it can be turned there's a screw on the other side and that a screw locks the dew shield in when when it is retracted and when you extend it it again locks it in place perfect because that makes the tube smaller when you want to store it during the storage and comes with this beautiful box so this is a premium quality telescope refractor perfect for astronomical observation contrary to what you may think if you use uh, and you may think that this is a narrow field telescope definitely of course for planetary when you use the one and a quarter inch focuser but you've put a, a two inch focuser here two inch uh, adapter here with the eyepiece and diagonal for two inch, it gives you two and a half degrees of field of view maximum. Think about it, that's around five times the width of the moon. It practically can fit almost the width, visible width of the Andromeda galaxy, which is around three degrees. Um, so that's perfect for also using as astrophotography uh, tool. I've tested it under the sky with the planet Venus. Perfect. No chromatic aberration at all. Sharp stars, pinpoints, edge to edge. And uh, really good, really good quality. And the box is a bonus. You don't need a bag for this. You just store it like that. So I have done two of the locks latches and i'm doing the other two perfect lyra beautiful telescope and you can buy it also under the label of the uh, telescope systems or telescope service really good box really Two handles also, you can pick it and install it and carry it. And I use it with the Dobsonian mount, I will show you later. So, not bad for a refractor which is F11. This is a Lyra 102 F11 refractor telescope. It has a dual speed focuser, Crayford focuser. And I've installed it on this uh, Dobsonian mount. It's around four kilograms, so it can take easily. This Dobsonian can take up to eight. I put the uh, Sky Watcher Max at a 150 piece Sky Max. That is around eight kilogram with all the additional things attached to it. it. Has a very bright image. I can see easily. It's like first of all, it is. It is like a upper chromat. I don't see any color fringe or anything. I'm looking at the planet Venus, absolutely clear. And it shows the phase, although it is uh, 
the planet is now behind some branches of tree, but it can resolve, dissolve, resolve it into a phase that you can see. So very impressed. Yeah, of course the tele the camera cannot show the real beauty of the uh, what I can see. Yeah, of course the tele the camera cannot show the real beauty of the. Uh, now I'm using the Scobo uh, uh, Takashi MCLE 18 millimeter eyepiece. The image quality is superb. Of course, I'm using this Lyra refractor 102. It's equal to, it's achromat, but the image quality is equal to apochromat or semi apochromat ED ones. And uh, the, I'm looking at the planet Venus, I can clearly see the phase of it. Then I can see the details, I can practically start to see details in that image. Now oh, I'm using the Takashi 8mm, oh no, 2.5mm, 12.5mm. I can see the details on the, actually the crescent of the Venus. Camera cannot show it unfortunately, but it's visible there. And this is despite the fact that the Venus is shining through through the le uh, branches of the tree, dense branches. I'll show you how it looks. That's what it is. And if you can see, the branches are there. If I move my... You see, the branches are blocking the... The, the planet flicks. Yeah. Then it passes. I'm just moving my hand around 20 centimeters and just affects it. The image quality with Lyra is so good. It's the images, the stars are so bright with this. The tiniest stars, I could not see them in the five inch Skywatcher one, one twenty. Skywatcher Star Travel one twenty. But with this one, I can see it. It's just four inch. F eleven. An amazing piece of engineering. It's made in China. Beautiful. Better than the Unitron, which was made in the Japan. Technology, everything is transferred. You know, it's like a, it's like a soul. It's like a wind. Can go anywhere. Now the technology is in the Unitron. is built in China. Look at this CNC machined. Lovely. Tube rings, four inch, and it's all here. This is a Skywatcher. Uh, 60 by 30, I think, 6 by 30. Uh, um, finder, I've, I've adjusted it for here. Anyway, uh, this Takahashi, really good quality. I'm waiting a little bit, uh, Venus comes out of the uh, leafy parts. And so I can actually go and uh, have observation without the leaves changing the you know the from time to time that cause a little bit disturbance so i'm waiting for that but you can see the quality in the takashi like this beautiful life this is and this is a vixen npl 40 meter nlv 40 millimeter and this is the Alter Prism, Alter Prism 2 inch, diagonal prism, really good for planetary work. So everything in this system that I have is perfect. Look at the size of these knobs, dual uh, adjustment knobs, so really good. I'm looking forward to the rest of the session when the planet Venus passed from the tree so I can go and observe it. This is a LiDAR 102 uh, F11 telescope, refractor telescope. Um, it has some features which I'd like to mention. First of all, this is a long tube telescope. It's a chromatic telescope, but because it has a long focal length, uh, it's a doublet lens, of course, in front. Uh, practically, it acts and works like a upper chromat, meaning that there is no color uh, fringe or chromatic aberration, as we call it. 
The other feature of it is that beautiful smooth feather touch uh, um, Crayford Dual Speed Focuser that just on its own is a lot that's probably cost around 150-60 pounds on its own then we come to the tube rings, these tube rings are CNC machined so they are not uh, cast they are CNC machined to precise uh, measurement by a CNC uh, lathe machine and uh, as you can see the oh the dust cap is has a nice shape you can just attach it and remove it easily and it's twisty you have to twist as a screw screw top the dew shield retracts you can bring it down to here so practically the length of the tube will be reduced and you can lock it in the position either being the extended or retracted i've installed it on this uh, um Dobsonian mount for a sky watcher sky max uh, uh, flex tube uh, 130p which can take up to 80 kilogram, but this is only 4 kilogram with the uh, Alter Prism diagonal that I've added and the uh, Skull Watcher, I think 60 by 30 or 60 by 9, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the 50 by 6, probably. I have to look at it. Uh, with this and the uh, eyepiece and everything, it weights around 5 kilograms. And uh, as you can see, I've just put it on the table. I'm having my breakfast, looking at the moon. I finished another painting, it's uh, during the coronavirus lockdown, so this is what we can do. And this is a superb quality telescope. I watched the Venus last night with it. Perfect, no color other than the pure color of the planet itself. No color aberration, no chromatic aberration. Beautiful. And I'm surprised by the quality of this Vixen NLV 40mm eyepiece. Perfect to the edge. I have, of course, a uh, Takahashi 18mm uh, LE eyepiece. I will use it when the moon comes out of the between the clouds. And this is a superb precise engineering made in China. Really best now. There was a time that the Japanese telescopes were good. It's because Americans invaded uh, Japan and they discovered what advanced optical industry Japan has. So everything American practically was made in Japan. Now they made it in China. China is the most uh, yeah, advanced country in the optics it seems. The movements of this telescope and this Dobsonian mount is so smooth. It's because the weight is right for this. Spotter smooth. Perfect. Okay, we loosen up this screw and then the dust cap, sorry, uh, the dew shield will come down. Let us go and have a look in the mirror and the lens. 102 millimeter of achromatic doublet lens.
and that's the lens cap completely protected now it goes back to this box I will unscrew it from here I remove the star diagonal and that's it that's what will be done we get ready to do some more painting here in the coronavirus lockdown There is a crater here called um, Asiruddin. That's the crater which I'm now zooming on it. Tiny one at the end of the three craters which are joined together. It's called Asiruddin after the Iranian astronomer. What you can see there in the center is the Copernicus crater. To the right of it is the Kepler crater. And the dot, tiny dot, to the right of that Kepler, near the edge of the white area, where the down to it, a little lower, is a black dot, that's Grimaldi. That tiny white dot is the uh, magnetic anomaly called uh, Rainer Gamma, or Rainer Gamma. As you can see, the thin layer of cloud is exists in the sky. It's moving. It's mist, practically. And, uh, yeah. 
the Italy shaped uh, area to the top uh, is the Jura Mountains and uh, and you can see a tiny dot also in the Jura Mountains called Plateau actually Crater Plateau the philosopher the bright dot to the two o'clock in this image if you imagine the top part is 12 and lower part is 6 at 2 o'clock of the image in the middle of the in in somewhere in the black patch the white dot is Aristarchus and the area around it is Aristarchus plateau the volcanic area Yes, the clouds are making it really dark. I don't know what it is, what it actually should be. Yeah, and the circular feature, black circular feature at the top at 12 o'clock is, uh, is the big black circle. Uh, is the Mare uh, um, Imbrium Sea of the Rains and uh, to the lower part of it at 7 o'clock of that circle what you can see is the mountains of the Apennine the Apennine yeah. 